So we've just finished rebuilding the ignition distributor. This is a Morelli. Uh, this is for the 69911T. Morelli distributors are actually one of the best ignition distributors to use on the T engines just because of their range of advance. Uh, although they've got a bad name because of availability of parts for some of these things. So I'm going to go ahead and install it into our engine. We already have the engine on TDC number one. Now one of the big differences between a Bosch ignition distributor and a Morelli is there is no markings on the housing where to place the number one cylinder. So what you want to do is first I'm going to lubricate my silicone, my distributor sealing o-ring with lots of silicone grease. This will make it easy to slide into the engine. I've already got my clamp loosely on there so I'm just going to bring it down. Now it is going to turn but what we want to do is take the ignition rotor and face it at the leading edge of the fan housing. So right now we are going to be out. I need to move it over one tooth. There we have it, so it's facing roughly at the front of the fan housing. Our number one post is going to be right here and our wire is going to be right here. So I ended up pulling the distributor out one more time, um, only because on this particular one, the way the gear has been indexed when they drilled the hole, when I had it pointing directly at the fan housing, my cap clip, if I can rotate the distributor, was going to be so hard up against the housing that there's no way I would have got the distributor cap on. So all I did was I moved the rotor over one tooth. This has allowed me to rotate the distributor housing. Now I can access my cap and get, thing, get the clip on a whole lot easier. So now I've got the distributor in. I'm just going to go ahead and install my wave washer and the retaining washer for the hold down clamp. So now all I'm going to do is just tighten that nut down. So before I lock down the distributor, I'm on TDC. I'm going to go ahead and set my static timing. This is going to make it easier when I go ahead and start it. So this is a clockwise rotating ignition distributor. If you see, I can turn the rotor clockwise. So what I've done is I've just rotated the housing all the way back until the points are closed. Now I want to rotate it in the direction of rotation until I see the points open. Once the points have opened up, which they have right there, if I twist my rotor in the advance direction, you can see that they're closing again. And the last thing I need to do is go ahead and install my distributor cap. So now it's time to install our ignition wires. So I've got my starting on cylinders one through three. I've just grabbed the wires out of the box and they're going to be the shortest, next shortest to the longest. Just to start off, I'm just going to install you want to make sure that you hear it click when you press it in. One of the most common problems that will damage the ignition system is these plug connectors not being correctly seated. So I've got all three clicked on. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my wire holder and I've already pulled all of the boots off the end of the spark plug wire. And I'm just, this is going to mount right in here, so I'm going to feed through each ignition wire through this holder. So 
install the holders, making a blunt hole goes down in through the center and you just want to stretch out the little nipple on the end until it twists and locks into place. So we're going to install my boots back on. I'm using a little bit of ignition grease. This is basically just silicone grease just to help the boots slide over everything nice and easy so I don't have to fly it. Do not want to use too much of this stuff. So now all I've got to do is connect my wires to the distributor. So I'm going to start with cylinder one. And that it in. And then this would be six. So the next one is going to be cylinder two right here. Sometimes when you got a little bit too much grease on, you can't press the wires into the cap. So we have one, six, two, four, three. It's going to be the last one right here. You want to make sure that those wires are pressed all the way down and then the boots are pressed all the way on. Then all I'm going to do is just adjust my lengths here to make sure that everything lays out nice. And we'll probably go ahead and install a loom holder to hold these two wires down to the cylinder heads. So the same thing on this side, I've just lined out my cables by length. Starting with my shortest one, on to cylinder number four. On these ones, they're going to be through the intake manifolds on the carburetor cars. Longest one, furthest away. Once again, make sure that it engages on the spark plug. Four and five are going to come through the same opening in the intake manifold. Cylinder six is going to come through on the furthest opening. Then we've got holes in my fan shroud here and here. So we're going to be using wire holders, same, same as the bit on the other side, and that's going to hold our wires as it comes up and over the different housing. So these are going to install into the fan housing the same way as we did on the other air guide. So we're just going to line that piece up, push it in to get it started, push our blunt all down. What this does is stretch out that nipple and allows it to pop through. If you try and just push them through or force them through or lubricate them, they'll tend to want to pop out. So just like before, I'm going to reassemble my boots back onto the ignition lines. Then the next thing I'm going to do is plug them in. So we're going to follow our firing order, clockwise rotation. So we have one, six, two, Four is going to be over here in the back. And cylinder five is going to be the last one. Slide our boots all the way down. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to clean up my ignition wires here where I've got extra wires. Just going to slide these back. I can deal with it at the plug a lot easier than I can deal with it at the cap. 
So we've got our completely rebuilt engine on our test stand and we're ready for the first stop. So there's a couple of things I want to do first. Uh, one, make sure we got plenty of oil and we've got our oil tank filled up. Uh, make sure all your lines are connected and we've got fuel connected. I've got my carburetors sitting on top. These aren't going to be the actual carburetors this engine is going to run with, but for all intensive purposes, they're going to be same setting, same choke, same jets. Uh, the other thing I've got is my timing light is ready because we've just set our timing at TDC. So not sure exactly where it's going to line out. It'll be close enough to start. And that's one of the things we want to set once we get it up and running. Now, I've also left my throttle linkages off between the two carburetors. That's only so I can do my first basic balancing of the carburetors. We'll be making a separate video on how to do that. So all I'm going to do right now is run my fuel pump for a little bit just to make sure I got fuel in my carburetors. And then I want to pump my carburetors a little while looking down the top just to make sure I'm delivering fuel, which we've got fuel in that one. I'm going to do the same on this one, just like that. Then I'm ready to crank it. Turn my ignition to on. So one of the first things I want to do when I get the engine started is I want to make sure that my ignition timing is in the ballpark. Now, I haven't set the timing correctly. We need to rev the engine to 6,000 to be able to do that. And that's a little difficult without the throttle linkages all hooked up. So what I've done for right now is I've just set the timing to zero. On this particular engine, it should be around five degrees after TDC, but we'll narrow that down once we've gone through and kind of got the carburetors close and I can put my throttle linkages back on. The other thing I'm looking for was immediately that I got oil pressure. Now on these early engines they can be delivered one of two ways either with just an oil light or a oil pressure gauge. They did not run both on these early cars. This one has an oil pressure gauge installed so I was looking at my oil pressure gauge at the back on my engine stand to make sure that I had oil pressure. The other thing that I'm looking for on the first startup is to make sure that my generator light or my alternator charge light goes out, just to make sure that it is working correctly. 
The other thing I'm looking for is oil leaks. So I'm looking around all the valve covers, I'm looking underneath the engine immediately to make sure that I'm not losing oil out any of these orifices. So before I adjusted the timing, when I first looked at it, we had about 15 degrees of advance. That means that the distributor was firing 15 degrees before TDC. So what I did first was I increased my idle speed on my carburetors uh, just to account for the fact that I was about to retard the timing, which was going to lower my idle speed. And since I didn't want the engine to drop I, or to stall, I increased that idle speed. Then. I'd already loosened the nut on the distributor and I was able to just twist the ignition distributor till I got it down to zero.